I want to talk to you about being led by the Holy Spirit. Being led by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you for visiting us in such a wonderful way tonight. You have been in this service from the very beginning. We have worshipped you. We have touched you. You have come and melted our hearts, and you have made it known that you are here. And I, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you touch me. You promised me when I was in my study this week that you would use this simple message tonight to save people who are turning around and going the wrong direction, that there are going to be a number of people in this service tonight. You arrange for them to be here. And Lord, this is not some deep theological message. This is one of the simplest messages that you have ever called me to preach. I preach it simply and humbly before you. But Lord, I know that you said that you're going to stop people. I was going to be like standing at the brink of hell. And some who were Christians who have lost heart, some about to give up, some about to step right into the gates of hell. And you placed me between them and those gates tonight. And you've told me to say, turn around and go back. And Lord, you're going to speak tonight. Some who have not yet learned to walk and be led by the Spirit of God. You want to lead us. You want to guide us. Holy Spirit, come upon me tonight. Give me energy. Give me your strength. And let me speak as an oracle of God. Jesus, help us to know what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin by making a statement tonight. And folks, this is a short message. But I know, I know, I know he put this on my heart. <clears throat> the statement is simply this. Multiplied numbers of God's people are now depending on man for their guidance and their direction rather than the Holy Ghost. They're depending on man. This is widespread all over the charismatic movement, all over the church of Jesus Christ today. People who once walked in the Spirit, who knew how to walk in the Spirit, have turned instead to the flesh. Nowadays, when a believer is in confusion, when there's trouble in his mind, their spirit, there's an impulse immediately. There's, there's an impulse that comes immediately to get on the telephone, call a pastor, call a counselor, call a friend, anybody, rather than running to Jesus, rather than getting alone in his secret closet, Rather than turning to the Holy Spirit for direction, first impulse is man. Let me talk to you, all over this audience tonight. Think about the past 30 days only. Don't go beyond 30 days. What about the pressure that's been in your life in the last 30 days? What about that crisis that has been there? What about that overwhelming problem that's in your life right now, either on the job or with your business, your home, your family, your private life, and suddenly you're swamped, and suddenly you're going through a test and a trial, and you've got to talk to somebody. You've got to, you, you, you're reaching out because people always reach out when they're hurting. Where did you go? What was the first thing you did when you were suddenly overwhelmed or you found yourself in a situation, it was beyond you. You were overwhelmed. What did you do? Did you immediately drop everything and go into your room and shut the door? Or did you find a little place, even if you're out on the street, did you find one of the parks? Did you go someplace and did you just get along with the Holy Ghost and did you say, Holy Spirit, I'm overwhelmed. I am being tested. I'm being tried. And I can't figure this out myself, and I don't know where to go, but I'm coming to you. Did you go to the Holy Ghost? Did you go to the Holy Spirit? Or did you immediately pick up a, a, a telephone? Did you think of your best friend? Did you think of running immediately to church and then after church, run to a pastor, run to a counselor? Now, folks, I am not against that. There's a place uh, for godly counsel, for Bible says in many counselors there's wisdom. But what is the first impulse? Where do you go first? You should not go to your friend. You should not pick up the phone till you've been to the Holy Ghost first. You've heard from him. He's given you the direction. And then talk all you want with your friends. But don't go to your friend. Don't go to anybody else for your direction. Because if the Holy Ghost abides in you individually, every Christian, 
not corporately, but individually, you have the Holy Ghost in you. Where and why in the world are you not consulting him for your direction? Why are you not going to him for your comfort? Why are you going to somebody else? Or why are you sitting up half the night? Sitting there in your living room or by your TV set. News is on, you don't hear it. You're just sitting there and you're trying to figure it out. Some of you can't sleep because you're trying to figure a way out of your difficulty or a business decision or the sale of your house. So many other things that press in and you don't know where to go. <clears throat> Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. What that scripture says, the more you depend on man, the more you go to people for guidance, for comfort, for strength, the further you get away from the Lord. You are slipping away from him when you turn to man. Cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of flesh. You know, there's some people who can't stand to be alone. They're never alone. They always have to have somebody around them. They can't face themselves. They can't face loneliness. They can't face making a decision by themselves. They have to have somebody with them at all times. And there are others are so dependent on other people that when that person moves away or turns against them, they fall apart because they're so totally dependent. That's their spiritual guru. Oh, don't laugh. Many of you got a spiritual guru. You've got somebody say, oh, he has such wisdom. She has such wisdom. When I have a problem, I go right there. And the whole time you've shunted the Holy Ghost. You have grieved the Holy Spirit because you depended on someone else other than the Holy Spirit. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in him. He is your help. He alone is your shield. Our fathers trusted in thee, O Lord. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and they were delivered. They trusted in thee, and they were not confounded. I want to tell you something. When I was preparing this simple message, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, and then when I slipped backstage to pray about it again during the song service, the Holy Spirit made it clear that there should not be in the house of God, listen to me now, there should not be one single confused believer. There should not be one of us living or walking in confusion. And if you are sitting here tonight with any amount of confusion in your spirit, it's because you have not been consulting the Holy Ghost. You have not believed that he would be at work in you. Let me tell you something. Some of you uh, think that because you have not yet spoken with other tongues, that you do not have the right to call on the Holy Spirit or that he does not abide in you in the same measure that he abides in people who have gifts. And they exercise these gifts and they seem to be so full of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, here I am. I'm a new Christian. I don't have those gifts. I don't know what they're talking about. Listen, you cannot be saved without the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Who do you think opened up your heart? Who do you think wooed you? Who do you think called you? That's the Holy Spirit. That was his work. Who broke the chains of sin in you? Who brought you to the blood? Who opens your heart? That was the Holy Ghost. You can't be saved without the Holy Ghost in your heart. You have the Holy Spirit. And he's there to be your guide, your comfort. Everything you need for life, godliness, correction, direction, everything is in him. Now we talk about being led by the Spirit. A lot of people talk about being led, and many of us think we're led by the Spirit. But many of us who think we're led by the Spirit have actually grieved the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. I quote it again because it's so important. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That sounds awful important to me. That if I'm going to be a son of God, 
and claim to be his child, I'd better be led by the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let me begin by talking about the unemployment of the Holy Ghost in many of us. In many of us, the Holy Ghost abides without any work to do. He's totally unemployed. He has no job. Because he's not being called upon. We testify that we're the temples of the Holy Ghost. Can't you say that? I, this, this body, according to the scripture, is the temple. This is where he abides. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. He says, it's good for me. It's best for me that I go. Because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. I'm going to send to you the comforter. And do you know that he is a spirit? But he is alive. He has a personality. And he abides. He lives in these temples of ours, these bodies. We praise him. We worship him. We acknowledge him. He's come to be our helper. He's our guide. He's our comforter. He's our power over sin. We all testify as Christians that that is the work of the Holy Spirit. That represents his employment. It represents what he, the Holy Ghost, does. But let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost cannot be called forth. He cannot be put into employment. He cannot do his work without the exercise of faith on our part. Just as Jesus could do no mighty works because of their unbelief, there were many all around him were seeing wonderful miracles and God was doing, Jesus was doing great things. Blind eyes were opened. The dead were raised because there was faith. But where there was no faith, his hands were tired. He could not do mighty works there. I don't know if it's because he refuses to do it. He has all power. But he was tied. He could not do his work. He would not do his work in the face of unbelief. The Holy Spirit. You know, you, you can come to church. You can pray in tongues all day long. And yet still have the Holy Ghost unemployed. Listen to me. Get this clear in your mind. Only faith calls forth the ministry and the work of the Holy Spirit. Only faith. You see, God doesn't have, when you pray, God, help me. I'm in a tight place. God, help me. I'm going through a trial. Oh, God, answer me. I need you. God doesn't have to send angels. He doesn't have to do any more work of grace. He has already put in place everything he needs to do the job you're asking him to do. Everything is done. All things that we need for life and godliness, God has already done by giving us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit in us is ready and willing to do abundantly above all we ask or think. Is that in your Bible? He is willing. He is able. But where is the faith? Where is the Christian who will say, I'm in a tight place. I will depend only on the Holy Spirit for my direction. I'm going to depend on the Holy Ghost for everything in my life. And you shut everything down in your life. If you're on a job, go to a back room, go anywhere and say, folks, some of you don't even talk to him. You don't talk to him. It's what I loved about Sister Kathleen Kuhlman. As many of you know, I, I preached for her once a month for over, I think, six years. She helped us build the Raresburg Farm in Pennsylvania. She's a very giving person. And my wife and I, since when, uh, my wife is here tonight and and she remembers when we went there, we would ride with her in the car and she was talking, but not to us. She's talking to the Holy Ghost. Going to a restaurant, and she's talking. She's not talking to me half the time, she's talking to the Holy Ghost. Half the time she's talking to me and then turns and talks to the Holy Ghost. She talked to him on stage, she talked to him backstage. She was, we would stand backstage ready to go out. And her face all fixed up beautifully with lipstick and mascara and everything. And she would start crying and talking to the Holy Ghost, mascara running all over her face. <laughs> to her, the Holy Ghost was as real as I was. He was a person. And she talked to him. She took all her problems. She took all her burdens. She took everything. And everybody who stood before her, she would pray, oh, Holy Ghost, how do I pray? And the Holy Ghost would give her words, tell her how to pray. 
And she would say sometimes, I, w- I was with her one time when, when uh, she was calling for a, a man who had a paralyzed arm to come and be healed. And there was a brother that had been down there, had been praying for about 15 years for his paralyzed arm, a man of faith and, and, and holy before the Lord. And he, here's an old reprobate back in the back of the church. Never been saved. Comes up, paralyzed arm, starts waving it. And he got the healing. And I remember her saying, Holy Ghost, that is not fair. She said, this man deserved it. And then she stops and said, wait a minute, I can't tell the Holy Ghost what to do. I can't tell Jesus. I don't know. I don't understand. It doesn't sound fair to me. But she reasoned with the Holy Ghost because he was a person. He was real. Folks, I want to tell you something. At this stage in my life, if I didn't know the reality of the Holy Spirit, if I couldn't talk to him, I want to go home. Because he's real. Jesus gave him to me. He gave him to him, planted him in your very spirit to call upon him night and day. Holy Spirit. Folks, as I tell you, when are you going to hear me? Here in New York, you can talk all you want to him on the streets. Nobody going to stop you. If they can talk to the devil, we can talk to the Holy Ghost. You know, it's a great tragedy. You know what the tragedy? I think when we get to heaven, there's going to, we're going to look back and, and we're going to see how much we missed. Now, there'll be no regrets, most likely, but we're going to see what we missed. Where we had all of this at our disposal, all the comfort we ever needed, all the advice we ever needed, all the counsel, all the guidance, everything we needed had been provided by the Father through the Holy Ghost. And yet we went on our way murmuring, complaining, and trying to figure things out, running everywhere, helter-skelter for a word. People running all over the conventions for a word. You know how they run for a word? They don't know the Holy Ghost. They talk about Holy Ghost meetings and they walk out without any word to their inner man. They don't know him. If you know him, you don't have to run anywhere. You don't have to go anywhere. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Folks, where is the power of the Holy Ghost? It's in the Holy Ghost in me, in you. He is there. Why are you looking elsewhere? Paul said, this power worketh in me mightily. Colossians 1.29 he therefore that minister you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. For the just shall live by faith. And what the apostle is saying, how is it that the Holy Spirit has brought forth to do his works? Is it through the works of the law? Is it by trying to please him and doing things so that you can earn it? No, he said it's by the hearing of faith. When the Holy Ghost hears your faith, when he hears you speak faith, When he hears you approach him in faith. He said we receive from the Holy Spirit by the hearing of faith. Faith alone. Praise God. All right. Uh, Do you have a Holy Spirit? I, I wonder. What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit being in you and in me? If we're not going to allow him to do his work. What's the purpose of it? Why has he been sent? To sit idly by? Because he said he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Now he's everywhere, he covers the whole earth. He was there when the world was created because according to Genesis 1-2, the Holy Spirit moved on the face of the waters. He was there in creation. It's amazing. He who put the stars in place and the sun and the moon and the universe and called the winds and the waves together and did all these great things. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Not another spirit. The very spirit that is abiding in you and me tonight was the Holy Spirit that went into the tomb, quickened the body, the dead body of Jesus Christ, 
and resurrected him from the grave. And that same resurrection power is in the Holy Ghost who is in me. It's not another spirit. It's the same spirit who abides in you and me. The very same spirit. Not another spirit. I want you to go to Isaiah 63. uh, Isaiah 63 for a moment. Isaiah 63. Here's where the Lord started this message in my heart. Verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 63. And in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. And in the Hebrew, they murmured and complained and vexed or troubled the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Now look at me, please. The children of Israel had been led by the Spirit. And you'll see it the rest of the chapter. The Holy Spirit led them through the wilderness, I mean, through the Red Sea. It was says by the Spirit of God. It says that the Spirit of God came on Moses. The Spirit of God led Moses. He was a Spirit-led man. Every day of his life, he was led by the Spirit of the living God. It's very clear here. But you see, they, if you walk in the Spirit and you're led by the Spirit, you're going to be tested. You will be tested. The Holy Spirit will wait till the last moment to see if you're going to believe. You're truly going to trust. He'll give you a word. And he says, I I don't want you to doubt that word. You hold on to that word. Don't let it go. Most of us hear that word, and then we say, well, that couldn't have been God. We let it go. God says, no, you hold on to that word that I give you. How many have had a word from the Holy Spirit? I mean, he's spoken to you. You know he told you something. You're to hold on to that with reckless abandon. No doubts, no fear. Holy Ghost, you said it to me. I'm going to walk in the power and anointing of that. I'll not let that go. And now, they didn't want to wait. They didn't want to, because you see, it's a very testing kind of walk. God, God will keep proving us because you see, many people have learned to trust the Holy Spirit over a period of time, and then when they get in a really, really hard place, they turn to the flesh. And and the Lord's going to keep on testing us until he knows, like Abraham, he, he finally said, in that final test when he has to give up his son, I know now, I know now that he won't let go of his faith. I know Abraham. He's my friend now because he... I know I can trust this man. I can trust his faith. I can trust his confidence in me. But the scripture says they rebelled. They began to murmur and complain because they couldn't stand this weight. They couldn't stand the testing of it. And so they they had brought out of Egypt these little gold mice and and little gods, these little gold and brass things. And they'd had them hidden in their, their, their sacks and in their bags. They had never gotten rid of them. In fact, the, uh, Moses said for 40 years they carried these in the desert. And so they would go into their tents and they would ask their questions and they would uh, they would pray. Not so much worship, but they would get direction from these little mice. These little uh, brass and gold gods that they had carried. Can you imagine that? But you see, our, our little brass gods, our little mice, because men are mice. And we go to men. We go to people. That's our God. And we keep them hidden away. We keep them there. It's always there hidden in our hearts. Well, if God doesn't speak, if the Holy Ghost doesn't speak, then I'll give him till tomorrow at 12 o'clock. And if I don't hear, I pick up the phone. And the Lord, the Holy Ghost was grieved. He was grieved because they would not depend on him. They had been led all this time, and then when finally God is bringing them into the promised land, they forsake the walk of the Spirit. They totally forsake the walk of the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit turned against them. The Lord turned against them and become their enemy. Now, folks, have you ever had that kind of experience where you know that things are happening in your life? Everything is going bad, from bad to worse, one problem after another. Now, folks, it doesn't always mean that there's sin. It doesn't always mean that God uh, is against you for a season. But, folks, I have been there. I know about it. 
I have been there when, when, when God would speak to me and I would not hear it. And I was walking in disobedience, not in sin, but of disobedience to something of the command of God, things that I was to do and I refused to do. And I was not walking in the spirit. I was not obeying the Holy Spirit. And I know what it is for God for a season to turn against me. Not that he hates me, but he's, he's against me, my enemy in my walk, in the direction that I'm going. He became their enemy. He does that to stop us in our tracks. He does it to bring us back to our senses that we would come to wholly depend on him and he'll let everything else blow up and fail until we say, all right, God, I give up. He brings us to that wit's end. Oh, by the way, folks, I, I got a letter this past week. My wife reads thousands of letters and she hands the good ones to me, you know, the, the juicy ones. I had written a, I preached a message here called Wit's End. And I sent it out. <clears throat> it's about coming to Wit's End. Some lady wrote us. She said, Dear Brother Dave, I disagree completely with your message. She said, For the last 22 years, I've had nothing but joy, gladness, no problems. She said, I, just, my, I, I don't plan to suffer. She said, I don't know what he means by Wit's End. She said, that's not the normal Christian. I think I'm living more, words to the effect, I'm living the, the normal Christian life and I, everything is so beautiful. I thought I ought to just file that letter in my desk and wait for a year or two till I get the second letter from her. <laughs> She's not walking in the spirit. Well, thank God when you have good times. Thank God. He, he gives us seasons of rest. And you know why he gives us seasons of rest? To get us ready for the next battle. <laughs> now, let, let, let me go to verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? You see, now there's, they, they've been brought to the end of themselves. They've been, the, everything the, the Lord had withstood them until they came to their senses. And now they're saying, how do we get back to that walk of the Spirit? And you'll see that there, uh, that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name, that led them through the deep, as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble, or as cattle, goeth down into the valley. The picture is a shepherd leading his sheep or his cattle down into the valley of green pasture. As a beast or cattle goeth down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So dost thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Now look at me, please. If you want, you talk about giving, your life giving glory to God. He got glory to his name by having a people finally come to their senses, their senses, and say, look, the only walk that we can walk is the spirit of God leading. Our father is a shepherd who loves. We are to commit ourselves completely into his hands. And when we do, he leads us into the valley of green pasture. Only only through the Holy Spirit, no other way. Now, now folks, I want to—I want to bring this to a head now. As I was preparing this, I had another message I was working on, and all well into it, called "Chosen to Suffer," and that was what I was going to preach tonight. But the Holy Spirit, uh, while I was working on that message, Command, literally spoke to my heart, said, get up, go to the chair and read Isaiah 63. And he said, I want you to speak Sunday night about being led by the Spirit because there are going to be people there that have to hear it because they're about to turn aside and they're about to give up. And so I, I began to study. I couldn't see it. I prayed and prayed 
I spent hours and hours. And I just don't see it. And finally, he just began to show me. He, he said, all you have to do is stand there and tell the people that I am to be everything to them. And they are to depend on me and by faith to bring my works to pass in their life. They're to be totally dependent upon me, not on man. And that I would be their energy. And I would be their strength. And I, I after hours, I had half of it done. I put it aside. I said, Lord, it's not coming. I can't preach it. And he said, go back. There are going to be people there Sunday night that I'm going to bring that have to hear it. I tried again. And after a few hours, working a little more, I, I said, sorry, Lord. And I went back to my message on, sorrow, on suffering. The Holy Spirit started nagging me. He said, you don't understand. He said, you're talking about being led by the Spirit. I'm leading you. I'm leading you now to stand there Sunday night. And he told me, he, he told me there would be a couple here, at least one couple, would be visiting here. I don't know if he's a pastor or pastors or not. And I'm telling you this in the Spirit right now, that are on the verge of giving up. You've known the walk in the Spirit, but you have been bombarded. You're overwhelmed to the point of turning aside and giving up. That there would be a teenager that had, that had to be stopped from racing into hell because about to give up. And others who had been coming to this church in the last two years just been saved in the last two years, and you're in confusion. And the enemy is trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy your faith. You have prayed about things and you have not received answer. And I'm speaking prophetically now and I want you to hear me. Because the Spirit of God would not let this go. I even argued with the Lord back in that room. said, Lord, I, I don't have much. And the Lord said, you don't need much. I'm speaking. And you get up and you tell these people what I'm telling you right now. That I am grieved that so many who have been coming even to this church. And who others who do not come to church but know the Lord in a real way and yet have not been depending on the Holy Spirit to rule and reign their lives. They're not getting their direction. They're turning aside, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm grieved by it. I'm totally grieved by those who turn to the flesh. And he showed me some of you just turning around and going away, going back, even though you didn't want to, you're going back because your heart is heavy, and I feel this so strong, your heart is heavy. Because you're not hearing. You feel left alone. And you're burdened. And you've got problems. Either in your home, your business, your job. You've got heavy problems. And folks, in my office, I get telephone calls from dear people even in this church and from other parts of the country, even from pastors in confusion. And, and they call me. They just want a word. Brother Dave, do you have a word? I, I Finally, I don't have anything. I'm a human being. I can't give that. But there are people that have to have. You've got to hear from God. You have to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. And He wants you to do it. And if you'll just get along with Him, and if you'll believe that He's there, that He wants to talk to you, He will. He'll speak to you. There'll be a still small voice saying, this is the way He walked you in it. And wait for that voice. You say, well, the devil's there. What you do, you go into the presence of the Lord and say, I take authority in Jesus' name over every lying spirit, every principality and power of darkness. You say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to love you. I'm going to worship Jesus. And then you get specific. You tell him exactly what your problem is. You ask him specific questions. You ask him exactly what you'd ask a friend or ask me. And you get real with him. You say, Holy Spirit, you abide in me. Speak to me. Talk to me. God is no respecter of persons. You don't have to be a Peter or a Paul. You don't have to be a pastor. He'll speak to you as plainly as any man or woman of God on the face of the earth. He'll talk to you. And this, this is what happens to people who are led by the Holy Spirit. They, they may be tested like everybody else. They may have a season of despair or depression. They may hurt. They may cry, but you don't keep them down long because they know the Holy Ghost is energy and He's power. I'm going to tell you, folks, for the last three months, I have, when I walk, I'm a block and a half from here. 
I had to do it this morning with my wife at my side. I said, honey, do you realize the last three months, every step I take into Times Square Church, I am praying to the Holy Ghost that he give me strength, that he'd be my energy, that he would open my mouth. I don't want to preach sermons. I want to see a people who are untouched, have been touched by the Holy Ghost who now to walk and talk to the Holy Ghost. And I have to pray, Lord, you're my energy. The same spirit that touched Jesus has to touch my body. He has to give me strength. That's why people walk in the spirit. You don't see them stay down very long. They're right back up again. They pop right up. They are tested like everybody else, but they've learned to depend on the Holy Ghost. They've learned to trust him. He is the energy of my soul. He's the energy of my body. There's no way I could have preached tonight without him. The energy of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. We talk about his power. Why don't you call upon it? Why don't you let him come upon you? Now, folks, if, you, if you've been to this church, you know I don't put on a show. You know Pastor Carter does not put on a show. There's been no showmanship in this church. But I'm going to do something which I rarely do, and I was directed by the Holy Spirit to do it. It may be more than one couple. But I know there's somebody from out of state that's here tonight. And I don't want any clapping. I don't want anybody to think this is some kind of a, of a prophetic show. But to me, it's life and death. There's a couple here, out of state. God arranged for you to be here tonight. You're on the verge. You're on the brink of a disaster. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. He wants you to come back to hear from him and not man. You've been overwhelmed. You've been hurt. I want you to get out of your seat and come down here for prayer. There's a teenager. I know this with all my heart. Holy Ghost spoke it to my heart. There's a teenager, the young person here, that's about to be swallowed by the enemy. You're crushed and you're hurting. You're bruised. You're really hurting tonight. You come down and be healed tonight. The Lord's going to heal you. He's going to touch you by His Holy Spirit. Are you out of state? Where are you from? Jefferson City, Missouri. Are you a pastor? Folks, folks, here, please. Have you been wounded by a congregation? Heal him, Jesus. Heal this man. Heal his spirit. Where are you from? Ohio. Portland, Oregon. Are you a pastor? Any other pastors up here? Where are you from? Connecticut. Are you wounded also? By congregation? Have you been pushed out? Yes. I'm waiting for a teenager. You're not a teenager. I want this congregation to join me for with, with these here. Would you put your hands on mine, please? Would you come and put your hand on top right here, right now? Congregation, will you stand? Would you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, I'm asking you now to honor your word.
and bring healing power. Folks, lift your voice and pray that the Holy Spirit will come and do a new work. Lord, a fresh touch. A fresh touch. Be encouraged by the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit will never depart this man. Never. And Lord, you're going to restore what the canker worm has eaten. You'll restore everything the canker worm has eaten. Spirit of the living God, come now. Come by your Spirit and power. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Only you can bring the encouragement. It can't be done by human power. Hallelujah. Lord, let there be no fear. No fear. Hallelujah. Bring healing to our body also, Lord. It's left a mark on our body. Jesus, heal by your spirit. Bring healing power. Bring healing power, Jesus. Bring healing power. Bless the name of the Lord. Just stay right there for a moment. I'm going to open the altars now for anyone who has just been convicted by the Holy Spirit. You say, Brother Wilkerson, I've been convicted. I've already been convicted by the Holy Spirit because I have not acknowledged Him. I've not been walking in the Spirit as I should. I'd like to have our elders. Would you please go down and stand behind these pastors, if you will, please, and lay hands upon them. And, and kind of uh, put a wall around them here while others are coming. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy Spirit's here. The Holy Spirit's here. Hallelujah. Right here, gentlemen, please. Uh, Ignatius, come right in behind here, if you will, please. Gentlemen, come right over here. All right. Uh, right. Right here. Okay. If you'll lay hands on them, if you will, please. Give me your hands. Lord Jesus, bring healing. Bring healing. Touch them, Lord. Bring them back to you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give me your hand, please. Oh, God, you are the great physician, Jesus. You're able now, Lord, to break every opposition. Oh, God, come now. The Spirit of the Lord is going to have his way now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be praying with you in just a moment. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and just praise the Lord with me now? Let's just begin to praise Him. He's going to come. Holy Spirit, come. You inhabit. God inhabits the praises of His people. Lord, we lift our hands and we just love You now. We worship You. We praise You. We give glory and honor to Your name. Hallelujah. Lord, sweep over us now. Sweep over our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. Be manifest. Holy Ghost, we have to have You. Holy Spirit, we must have You. We must have you right now, right in this church, right in our hearts. We must have you, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Spirit of God, come. Break the, break all chains. Break every chain. Oh, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God. If you're here tonight and you're not right with the Lord, you should be in these aisles. You should be coming down. If you're not right with the Lord, if you've been running from Him, your heart's cold, why don't you come and join these? Now, this would be a wonderful night to have your life transformed and changed. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, before I pray for these up here, I, I just have to say it up on the balcony here on the main floor. Listen to me now. Some of you have been very discouraged. You've been on the devil been trying to lie to you and tell you to give up. I know it. 
He'd been trying to tell you to give up. You don't, I'm not even going to ask you to come out of your seat. Just stay right where you are because we're so full here. But I'm going to ask you right now to turn to the Holy Spirit by faith right now and pray, Holy Spirit, keep me by your grace. Holy Spirit, teach me your ways. Holy Spirit, I'm going to turn to you with all my heart. Make Jesus real to me. Make Jesus real to me. Hallelujah. Make Jesus real to me. Oh, Spirit of the living God, turn us around. Don't let the devil deceive us. Let there be no deception. Hallelujah. We take your authority over it in Jesus' name. This is the conclusion of the message.